Oh, that's not gonna be good. Viral debrief number three, coming up. Hey, 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. The 7-4 crew has been great about sending me videos to help me keep making this series. Obviously, you're enjoying it. If you have a video that you've seen on YouTube or you've seen online that you want me to cover, the two ways to get them to me now are you can either go into the form section that I created, which is free for everybody to go into. It's 74gear.com slash forum. You can go there. I'll put a link in the description or you can send it to my Instagram. Copy the link, send me a direct message and let me know when the cool part of the video starts. All right, let's get into it. I don't know what he's saying there. That may be Mayday. Restart your engine, bro. No, don't think. Oh, that's not going to be good. I can't see what he's doing here, but I'm hoping that he's using his hands to try to restart the engine. Every plane, big or small, whether you're flying a 747 or a Cessna 152, is gonna have a speed that they want you to be at to restart the engine. Obviously, this guy's very low to the ground, so there is not a lot of time here to get that speed and get the engine restarted. You see here, he starts diving towards the ground. Now, I don't know if that's to get the plane on the ground quickly or it's ordered to restart the engine. And I'm, I'm hoping it's to restart the engine, but I can't again see exactly what his hands are doing. The problem is he's trading altitude for speed. Meaning if you're going to go down, you're going to speed up. If you're going to go up, you're going to slow down. So he's trading his altitude for speed. By going down very quickly, he's accelerating very quickly. Something else to keep in mind is you see that he's in this bank very low to the ground. You never want a bank like that, that low to the ground, because if you miscalculate and you clip a wing, the whole plane is gonna cartwheel. This isn't like a James Bond movie where you can just rip a wing off and keep flying. You can see here that he's going so fast that when he tries to put it down, the plane doesn't wanna land yet. Obviously a plane, the wing is designed to fly. So if you're going really fast and you hit the ground kind of hard, which it looks like he does here, the plane wants to get back up in the air. You've heard me talk about guys floating, that's because they're going too fast, or if you're going too fast and you hit the runway, the plane is going to bounce up in the air because the plane wants to fly. Go too fast, the plane wants to fly. Go too slow, you fall out of the sky. So there's kind of an envelope that you're supposed to be within, a range of speed. That's your ideal target you're supposed to get to to land. Again, I realize he lost his engine, that's gonna make everybody very nervous, but that's what's happening here. He's going too fast, so as soon as he touches down, the plane wants to get back up in the air again. He had the right idea except for the speed part, to get down on the ground quickly, flat place, look kinda like some crops, so he had the right idea to get in there. Then when he hits and he gets back up in the air, it looks like he pulls up a little bit to get over this tree line. The problem is you notice that he's in a bank. What looks like happens is his left wheel grabs the trees. What happens then is that's going to spin the plane to go sideways instead of forward because that left tire gets, gets pulled around. It's kind of like if you stomped on the rudder really, really hard, it's gonna just yank the plane around. So now the wings of the plane aren't generating lift and he's just in a flying tin can going towards the ground as a projectile. The next problem is because he's going sideways, the rudder is not gonna have any effectiveness because the wind isn't blowing over it. I can't see what he's doing with his feet, but I'm hoping he's stomping on one of the rudders to try to bring it around so he can land forward because if you land sideways like this, it's obviously gonna look like this. Anytime you land a plane at a 90 degree angle from the way it was designed, it's never going to end well. So I hope he was okay. There's an old saying I got taught a long time ago and they said it was from the Red Baron. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's when you have an emergency, the first thing you need to do is wind your watch. Basically, what that means is that when you're in an emergency, don't start flipping switches and doing stuff. Take a second to take in what's going on and analyze the situation. In most cases, you have a few seconds to figure out what's happening and analyze the information. If you're just reactionary, you may end up turning off the wrong engine or shutting down something you need or doing something like dive bombing into the ground when you had a lot of other places to go land. For example, this guy in the area, what it looks like, he could have just circled around, slowed down and lined himself up. Now again, this is coming from a person that's not in that situation, so it's easy for me to sit back and say, Oh, what I would do would be this. I've never been in a situation where I lost an engine, but 
We're just breaking down what he could have done. If you learn from the mistakes that other people make, it's going to make you a better pilot. So that's all we're doing here. What he could have done that would have been better would have been to find a nice open plane field to land in, slow it down to the appropriate speed, and then just come in and stop there and get in as slow as possible before touching on the ground. Also landing forward would have been a lot better. Oh yeah, this happened actually in Tampa. I was... I was actually in Tampa when, when I saw this on the news. I actually just, uh, I just flew with a, a, a captain two, three days ago who used to fly these. We were talking about it. There isn't really a lot to debrief here. If you're not familiar with the story, basically these pilots were coming and supposed to land at McDill Air Force Base and they ended up landing in a small airport. They're not the first pilots to do it. Pilots have it happen to them all the time. That's typically why personally what I like to do is when I fly an approach, even on a very clear, perfect day, is to fly it visually, but back it up with an ILS, which is a landing system. So I make sure that I'm flying in the right direction on the right runway and things like that. So. They obviously weren't doing this. They just visually were looking at it and they landed on a very small runway. The problem is, is that a large aircraft like this needs a lot of runway to get off the ground. So the one thing that you'll notice is, is that he powers up the engines. Listen to this real quick. The reason he leaves those engines up before he lets off the brakes is because it's not like a fighter jet. It takes a couple seconds for them to get full power, to get spooled all the way up. And the pilots obviously want to have as much power as possible before they actually start the roll. So they let those engines spool up 100% and it's blowing stuff all over because that airport's not set up for a large aircraft like this. But he lets that rev up all the way and then lets the brakes off. They did a great job getting out of there. I'm having a hard time understanding what some of the people are saying there. I don't know what language that guy was screaming on the ground, but if a helicopter started flying at me, I'd be pretty scared too. I have to make a few assumptions here. One, that this helicopter is landing into the wind. The reason I say that is because it looks like there's plenty of space for this helicopter to land the other direction. And just like a plane, a helicopter wants to land into the wind. This is what looks like is happening. As soon as the skid, which is like the landing gear, touched down on the ground, the helicopter is obviously safely on the ground. Something that you get taught in flight school is if you go through flight school is that you have to keep flying the plane even though it's on the ground and that also applies for helicopters. On a plane we use a yoke and on a helicopter you have a cyclic. That means as soon as you land you're going to want to guard that cyclic. You're going to want to hold that and make sure that nobody accidentally bumps it and that's what looks like happens here. It looks like once they're on the ground, either the pilot or somebody else that was sitting up there accidentally bumped it because it goes over very fast. But the pilot has a great reaction. You see how it noses over real sharply here and then it gets up in the air? That's actually really impressive. What's happening is the helicopter is about to nose over and those blades are about to hit the ground. And what they do is they grab a lever which is going to help the helicopter get up into the air. So what they're trying to do is prevent the blades from hitting the ground and hitting the trees. So they grab that lever and try to get the helicopter actually airborne and prevent it from crashing. That's some crazy fast reaction. The problem is, as you can see here in this frame, you can see that parts of the trees are already getting chopped up by the blades of the helicopter. Even though the helicopter pilot grabbed that lever, which is called the collective, even though he grabbed that and yanked it to try to get up, he wasn't able to clear the obstacle of those trees. Had they been in, let's say, a clear desert or in a parking lot, it looks like he probably would have made it. Because he ended up hitting those trees, it gets very hard for those blades to not get damaged and not have the helicopter crash. Something to always remember when you're flying a helicopter or a plane, as soon as you land, it's not over. The job's not over until you get it parked or you get it shut down completely. So just keep that in mind. This is obviously a freak accident of what happened and the pilot looked like he or she did a great job to try to save it, but I don't think that they did. I finally understood what they said. He said stunning. 
If you don't know this about aviation, in the air we have something like roads that you have on the ground. They're different roads and then you have on ramps and off ramps basically at airports just like you get onto a freeway. So there's going to be these freeways that we're traveling on and then there's on ramps and off ramps to get to and from airports. Typically you're not going to ever find yourself stacked up like this all flying together in one direction except in one circumstance and that's flying over the Atlantic Ocean. Now I don't know that they're flying over the Atlantic Ocean, they could just be in a very congested airspace and all flying together like that, but typically you're not going to have four planes stacked together flying in one direction like that. And the reason I say Atlantic and not the Pacific is the Pacific has a different setup when you fly over it. On the Atlantic you have a very specific track that you're going to fly on, so you'll have very specific altitudes and things that you're all entering together. It's just got a different set of rules and that's usually the only time that I'll see multiple planes stacked up. The other thing about this is, is that I'm guessing they're flying west. Again, I'm making a big assumption here, but typically you're going to have a lot of traffic going west in the daytime and east at the nighttime. So usually they'll take off in the morning from Europe, for example, and fly west to the U.S. and land in the daytime. And then in the U.S. they'll fly back at night, they'll leave at night, fly throughout the night and get there in the middle of the day. Got it on there. The guy on the other side. Oh, no! I, I didn't know I was going to put it at that. Whoa! Flaps up. It was kind of funny to me how once he stopped there, he decided to put the flaps up. Like that was the first instinct. Oh, we got to get these flaps up. Like, oh, we're in our parking spot. We'll just go ahead and pull it in here. Nobody's going to notice what happened. The person who sent this to me asked me, how did the wind blow this plane over? But I don't think it was the wind that blew it over. Let me explain. Wind can get beneath your wings and lift the wing up and slap the other wing on the ground. Like exactly like what you saw here. That can happen if you don't have the aileron correction in. Meaning you're not moving these, which are the ailerons. That's how we turn the plane left and right. If you're not using those and turning it into the wind, a plane can get flipped over like that. That is possible. You can see here his ailerons are neutral, which means he's giving no input left or right to keep the wind from affecting him. There's a couple reasons why I think it's not wind that blew him over. The first is you can see he's not in a very stiff crab here. It could be the camera angle, but it looks like he's coming in straight, coming into the runway. The other thing is look at this windsock here. To get fully inflated, for lack of a better word, the wind has to be at 15 knots. And this one is halfway inflated, so you're maybe five to 10 knots, let's say something like that is where the wind's at. Usually wind of five to 10 knots is not gonna be enough to lift the plane up and lift it over like this. The pilot is making no corrections for wind. I don't know what their experience is, but these ailerons are not turned into the wind to prevent the wing from going up. So if that is the case, that would be the first mistake that they'd be making. But I think what's happening is they're trying to get off the runway really quick. And because the plane is going really fast, I think it's just momentum of them turning, trying to turn too quick and the plane actually just tipping over. It'd be kind of like if you were driving your car really fast and try to take a corner, it just looks like it gets tipped over and then they don't really do anything to correct it. And again, I don't know why the very first thing that they wanted to do once they stopped there was get the flaps up, but at least he was cleaning up his aircraft. I really enjoyed doing this series and based off the volume of videos that I get sent, it seems that you're enjoying them too. If you never saw the very first viral debrief video I did, I'll put a link to it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.